So without going through a lot of boring detail, I pulled my grips off. I just decided that uh, since I was putting on new grips that I would just do it the easy way, which is a razor blade. Cut those off and I'm like, I'm just scratching my head trying to figure out uh, with these wires that come out of here that come to this, this lead here, um, it's just a you know, plus and a minus wire. <clears throat> but the way this heating element works is it's a continuous zigzag of, uh, it's basically a resistive element, which you get a lot of resistance over this. When you put um, DC power to it, um, it should, you know, heat up. So you don't have to put a lot of volt, you don't have to put a lot of power into it. Um, but when you do put power to it, it heats it up. So I think the way the machine works is <clears throat> there's three different power settings for three different heat settings. So when I check, check the continuity of this, if I check this one, I get continuity on this wire. When I check this one, I get continuity on this side. But I should get continuity on both of these because it's a resistive circuit. So that this entire thing should be resist, you know, should be it should have continuity. And when I took the um, the grip off, I see this right here. There's a break in this cable. This is the only reason why this wouldn't work. And here's the crazy thing I've learned about Ducati and these heated grips, and that is. This grip and this grip over here are tied in series. So if this grip stops working, that grip stops working at the same time. <laughs> so instead of having one cold hand, you've got two cold hands if you have something like this happen. So my plan is to take this off. I've got some uh, Oxford grips that I bought. I just bought the left and right. Grip. I'm going to take this off. I've already taken it off over there. And these are just all the ones for the controller. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that cable. These were $20. I mean, $20 is $20. But um, I think the easiest thing for me to do because I can't get access to the other end of the cable. I'm just, I've just cut this cable. And I'm going to this cable and put these on and I should be back in business because that's all this is, is a resistive circuit. But yeah, a small cut like that will keep this whole thing from uh, heating, but not just that, but because they're tied together, it keeps both of them from heating. So yesterday I determined that uh, the reason that my grips are not working is because uh, there's a break in the filament here. So I've decided to take the entire filament piece off, but I, you got to leave the top piece on because that is the, um, that's the part that the, uh, the new grip is going to go over. However, there's this channel that these wires go into and this piece is over that channel as well as this piece right here. So this piece right here, and then you can see that the wires that go through the, to the grip, this is the stock grip. Uh, that you can, I, I can feel this where it's actually broken. It looks like it's, uh, it's essentially fused. So um, I'm going to take all this off, and I want to take this off too because the new grip needs to go over this, whole, this entire thing. So I'm not going to leave any of this stuff on here. So what I did was I took the bottom piece off, there is a screw that goes in here, and I took the screw out and then it left this piece, this piece, but you can pry it off with a small screwdriver. And the other thing that you can do is pry the whole plastic shroud off. So this will come off, and once you get that off, of course this fell off into the floor. And once you get that off, you can see that um, this exposes the entire grip interface and what I'm going to do is I'm likely going to cut this if I can't get my grip over it I'm going to I'm going to cut this this piece of the grip off um, and I may although I don't know yet I may cut this rib down but you can see that I need I need to turn the grip this way here 
So, taking the filament off, took that little piece off so I can get the new grip over the top of that. Um, and yeah, so that's what I'll be working on. It's not complicated, but you do have to take a bunch of parts off. I didn't want to go with the Ducati grip because they send you something, and i be honest with you, I think it's this entire cable assembly, including the grip, and it's 400 US dollars versus $40 or 10% of that for new heated grips. So um, I'm just taking this off. I already got the grip off over there, sitting here. Um, don't know if this one's actually working or not, but I suspect because these are in series that this one's probably working just fine and it's this fused grip right here that's causing the problem. So uh, this grip actually was pretty easy. Once you take it off, there's a small screw that went into that grip. I forgot to um, show you how to do that, but that thing just popped right off. Um, you take that screw off that's right there and it slides you right off. I mean, it's easy peasy. And this, if you look at the um, wires inside of here, those have continuity, whereas these did not have continuity. So clearly this is, uh, this is the problem right here, this, this is where this grip is fused. So anyway, because they work together, there's no way that, uh, you, I mean, you lose both grips, you don't just use, lose one. So unfortunately, that's the way that Ducati designed this. So I'll get that swapped out, and um, hopefully I can show you the finished product when I'm done here. But I thought it was worth mentioning. I'll probably put a separate YouTube just on these grips and the problem that I've had because from what I've read, this is pretty common with this motorcycle. And yeah, it takes a little bit of work. Uh, I happen to be in the uh, middle of this coronavirus thing, and so I do have time to work on my machines, but um, you can see this is a fused filament here. Not good. And it's such a simple $2 product. I don't understand why Ducati has decided that it's um, a $400 change. It's just ridiculous. Okay, quick update. So this is the Oxford grip. And this is for the clutch side. And it's going to go on very, very easily. I'm not going to put it on there yet because uh, I just want to make sure I've got everything in there. But it's going to go on there without any kind of soap or you know any kind of lubricant at all. And on the throttle side, I got all of the um, filament off, all the plastic off, uh, all the uh, adhesive and all that kind of stuff off. And this is going to go on just fine as well. Um, I'm also not going to put it on quite yet because I just want to make sure I got it in right. But at the end of the day, what I'm going to do, and I'll go through this in detail, is I'm going to cut the. I'm going to cut. Even though this has its own controller, and they've gone through a lot of trouble putting a really nice connector on here, I'm going to cut this off uh, because I'm going to cut this as well so that I don't have to go digging around for the uh, the end of this cable. And I'm going to use basically. I'm going to really put this in a very nice way, you know, all the way around the handlebars and stuff like that out of the way, and uh, then took all the wires out. But at the end of the day, I'm going to join these two wires. I'm going to use a, um, a waterproof method of joining those cables and get this all put back together, but that's sort of the plan, and so I don't have to buy the stock Ducati grips and worry about all that. I'm just going to put on these aftermarket aftermarket Oxfords and um, just hardwire them into the existing um, infrastructure here. Inside of these, these are these are molded. They're molded plastic. The filament never touches air. Uh, I would imagine that that's going to be a um, a nice feature of these grips. They're also as stiff as a board, so. You're not going to poke them or bend them or anything like that, and they're not going to be compromised by having contact, direct contact with water. So, anyway, I'm going to put them on like that with the um, cables facing back, and then I'll run those cables as nicely as I can underneath. Just make sure they stay as much out of the way as, they, as I possibly can, 
and make them look halfway really nice once they're uh, inside the motorcycle. So that's what I'm doing. Um, as soon as I get it put back together, oh, I am have decided to. Um, you can see that there's this little lip where the uh, other grips grab hold, and there's also a, a small little lip there. I am also going to cut that all off. I guess I guess I should note too. I cut this. I cut the ridge off of this as well. So, cut the ridge off the end. Um, I'm going to cut this ridge off and this ridge off, and then this grip is going to go all the way to the extent that it will. It'll go all the way to the end, which looks like pretty close to the very, very end. So I'm just going to make sure that it has a, a clear path to get that completely over, and won't hit anything on the way over. So I'm going to work on that. Sort of plan at the moment. It's about to five o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, okay. Okay. Final report on the driver's side grip. I took off all of the um, ridges on this side, so there's no more putting the bolt on right there. And there's a little stop there. Took all that off. I took the ridge off. Oh yeah, and there's a 0% zero, zero chance that you're going to uh, not leave DNA at the scene, so, um, you know, work at your own peril, but I got a nice smooth um, separation from the throttle cable and the actual assembly to turn the throttle, so that's good, and the, um, you know, sort of the goal is to put the grip on there so that it goes up all the way up against the um, throttle cable. I should also note that um, it is kind of hard to get this part of it off and so what I did was I used a torch and a screwdriver and I heated up the screwdriver in to melt the plastic. Um, that was really kind of hard to get to over here and then just finished off that with a um, and the reason I cut myself is I'm, I'm using these um, these blades that are designed to cut mats, not to uh, <laughs> break plastic. And I put myself. Anyway, the aftermath of the uh, grip is down there on the ground. I don't have to deal with that anymore. So the next step is to put the actual grip on my handlebars and get them wired in. Now before I do that, I'm going to cut the ends off. Like I said, I'm going to test them against the cables that are on the bike. And um, that's sort of the next step. Uh, so I'll let you know how that goes. So I do quite a bit of wiring. And I have tools to, to help me. So like I was saying, I'm going to... Unfortunately, these, these guys went through a lot of trouble to put these really nice cable ends on this uh, set of grips. I'm unfortunately going to have to cut those off because these unfortunately do not do me any good on this motorcycle so cringe when you're ready and off they come so I really don't think there's any need to keep those but if you actually get the Oxford grips don't do this obviously <laughs> but uh, you can tell that inside the uh, cable there's just two cables there's a um, this is a resistive circuit that's in series they use a fairly low gauge wire but these are unlike the Ducati ones these are 100 percent waterproof so when you do get the Oxford they come with nice nice o-rings on the connectors so when you put these into the control unit I didn't want the control unit on my motorcycle I want to use the stock um, Ducati uh, controls so I don't need this but these are 100 percent waterproof I really hate to take these um, these grips apart but they don't work in my application, so I cut the ends off. So the other thing that I have is a um, Exolite. I use this stripper for stripping coax cable all the time, but it does come in handy when you want to do something simple like this. If you're trying to expose a little bit of the cable in, you just put them in here and you just spin it around a couple of times, and it will break the cable for you, so that you can pull the cable ends out. And has a really nice hermetically sealed end on it and it doesn't break the inside cables so if you want to know what that is that's a XL light I use this all the time I've had this 
this for a very long time. Even though this is on nine, which cuts pretty deep, you can you can change it to cut not quite so deep. So if you have um, a very thin shield on your cable, this is actually a very thick shield. Most of them are. So I cut it down to the to the longest side. Put it in on the blade side, spin it around, and it'll come off just like that every time. So now I'm gonna get to uh, work on stripping these things back. And the initial test that I'm gonna do is just to take the, um, the Ducati grip. I'm also gonna cut this off. Crunch when you're ready. That's all it takes to cut a pair of grips. And again, you can see very clearly that this is not waterproof. These are just cables inside of a sheath that I think, frankly, the, the best thing to do is to take the sheath back and just cut a little bit about cut a little bit about cut a little bit of that off. and then strip those wires back uh, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder these grips on before I put them on on both sides and turn on my motorcycle show you how to strip these back again turn on my motorcycle turn on the heated grips make sure everything's heated and uh, then I'll do the final installation, which is basically flanging things up. So, unfortunately my soldering iron is in another room. So, I'm going to get all these ends ready for the solder. Cable them all up. So this one, this one seemed very thin at first, but it's not so thin as I look at it. Anyway, I'll get these um, these soldered in nice and tight, uh, just to test the grips on both sides, and then uh, let you know how that goes. So I couldn't find my. Uh, Portable soldering iron for some reason. It's around here somewhere. Not exactly sure where, but uh, got my, uh, I don't know how old, 25, 30 year old Tandy. It's like gross overkill for this job. But instead of holding things up, I'm gonna tend these wires. join the connections remember this is just a test uh, This particular circuit doesn't have to look nice. This is why I need my
my other tool. This thing's too hot. This thing, this thing gets too hot. I don't know, got the job done. So I just tested them, and like I expected, they work just fine. So I'll clean all this up and put my motorcycle back together and kind of give you the, uh, the final throw by throw. But if you want to replace the Ducati heated grips with these Oxford grips, they work totally fine. You can cut the ends of them off. You use the existing cables for the Ducati. It doesn't matter, the polarity doesn't matter because this is a DC power, this is a resistive circuit. So essentially your electricity is gonna come in one, go through the resistive um, film on the grip itself, come back out, go out to the other grip, come in, go through the res resistive grip and go back to the other end of the circuit to return. So these Oxfords work great, I know it's kinda like looking at this is going to be stressful to cut those ends off but these are from Revzilla is where I bought these from I bought them without the controller and they are I think $19 nineteen ninety. they just say $20 plus shipping but I had them included with another order so shipping was free and they worked totally fine so these are nice and warm still uh, even on the low setting one of the nice things about the Ducati is is that they really pump a lot of juice through these um, heated grips, so you don't really need to run them above like minimum or you know minimum or uh, the mid, but the maximum is like on fire, even with like um, a good set of gloves on. So uh, anyway, the Oxford the Oxford grips they work just fine. Um, wire them in without any other kind of device. I'm gonna. I'm done this like this for now, but I'm gonna shorten all these cables and make them look nice. I'm gonna shorten uh, both sets of cables actually, uh, but I'm gonna put them on my bike first to make sure that um, I've got them in a position that I want. But uh, yeah, so the Oxfords work just great. Now you can kind of ignore everything on the web about um, you know putting on new multi-strata hand grips for uh, $400. And I guess that the, I didn't even call, I just don't call those guys anymore, but um, the uh, dealer wants something like 250 bucks to put them on, which is again ridiculous because, well, you do have to take everything off to get underneath the, uh, the gas tank to get to the place where they're connected. <laughs> but if you do this, um, you just cut the connectors, solder in new grips, clean it all up, and it'll probably work um, for the lifetime of this bike air free, so. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do, so I'm going to get with that. But I've got another couple of chores to do before then, so it's going to take me a little while to finish up this little project, probably uh, before the end of the weekend. Anyway, that's how it works. That's how I did it. And it's half past six. It's just about dinner time, so I'm going to get out of here. All right, so back to the heated grips. I've moved my kid away from college for the coronavirus thing. And uh, back on the motorcycle build. So essentially, I pulled off the uh, the old grip. There was a um, no, I know why people don't use this camera to YouTube with. There was a. Um, screw right here and just unscrew the screw from the grip and the grip came right off so that's no issue there so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these Oxford grips and I'm just going to work them on and I'm going to do so without using any um, soap or anything like that it just feels like that they'll go on without any problem at all so I may have to use uh, my right hand here. I'd like to get this on without using any kind of anything. Let's see if I can. I don't know where to put this camera. 
I don't know. Let me turn this thing off and I'll uh, see if I can't find something to put it on. All right, so it wasn't hard, but I just had to use both hands to get it on. Um, these are the Oxford grips. I don't mind the gap in there. I think it actually uh, will let some of the water and stuff kind of wick away. And there's plenty of space here on the end for the uh, grip. I made sure that the um, the wire is turning inwards like this. And what I'll do is I'll move it around, you know, sort of out of the way. But this will help keep the water out of the wire as well. And also, it does not get in the way of the grip. So anyway, that's the left-hand side. I am going to have to cut. This was just a temporary, as you know, from yesterday. This was a temporary fix. Just to test the heated grips. What I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to, I'm going to cut this back through here. Man, this, this camera's bad. I'm going to cut this back and through here. And then also cut the, um, the cable and dress this thing nicely through the back. Because I'm using the existing uh, Ducati cables. Um, I'm using existing Ducati cables to do this job. I'm not, I'm not pulling out the old cables at all. So I'm going to cut all this back. I've got a proper um, soldering iron and solder. And now I'm ready to um, sort of do that job and finish that up. But unless you're staring at them, you're not going to know these are not Ducati uh, grips. And they should be actually better because these are completely rubber sealed inside their housing. Um, and they look really good and they're nice and uh, nice and strong and comfortable so you know I think the big difference is is that the Ducati ones had a cable that came directly out and went back behind here and that's not obviously that's not going to happen but that's not a problem either at least it's not a problem for me I'll be able to basically put these back just like um, the other ones and pretty soon I won't even notice that cable up there so I'll figure out a way to run it in there nicely so that it's sort of out of the way this one's going to be a little bit more of a problem because this grip right here is bigger it's not going to be too much of a problem frankly um, but I'm going to need to use both hands what I'm going to do though is I'm going to get a tripod and, and at least um, try to video me putting that thing on since I didn't do the one on the left hand side but I was able to get the uh, left hand side grip on without any problem I don't think this one's going to be much more of a problem, but I might have to use a rubber mallet to actually put it all the way on. And again, I've I've taken all of this plastic off on the side, so there's there's nothing that's going to keep that grip from going all the way to the edge there, at least to the point um, it is over on this side over here. And I think the nice thing is I want to put a throttle lock on this spike, and I think that the gap that's going to be between here and here is going to be able to help me get my throttle lock in there like I want it to because it's going to go in there in this this space right here so we'll see i'm going to go get a tripod out of the truck and uh, come back and try to film some of this stuff be right back okay got a proper tripod so i can sort of show you how to do this but the uh, once you got the plastic completely clear of all the adhesive it's just a piece of plastic that's sitting on top of the metal. So the same idea is true. Um, just make sure that this is pointing sort of in the backwards direction so that you don't have a you know, problem with the brake. Now my brake is I've got the hydraulics on there pretty tight. So I don't have to pull back to lock up my brake. I don't have to pull back more than a probably inch. But uh, just so that that stays out of the way, just like the other side. Now I may get halfway through this and decide that I need to... Um, you know, put like soapy water or something in here, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna try it anyway. I'm gonna try just a little bit of soapy water on my hand, and then I'm gonna put it on the, uh, the motorcycle. We'll see if we'll see if that works. I mean, it's a very very light thing of soapy water. But I was just trying to um, create bubbles in an airline. Let's see. Um, try and do this without getting in the way. Okay. 
tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a rubber hammer right behind me here. And I think the idea is not to hit anything too hard. It's right up there, firm with the edges. There is a bit of a gap there, and I'm okay with that. If I need to in the future, I can still put pressure on that and make that go a little tighter if I want to. I do have a gap here, and I think that gap is just fine. You can see it, it's not even as wide as my little finger. Okay, so I recorded um, that whole last video. I don't even know if I, what I got on there, but uh, essentially what I'm doing is I've already finished this side. I've put the, I've put the heated grip on. I've run the cables and I finished up the, um, the cabling. I have not gone through the process of um, you know, fastening down the wires yet in case I've got something wrong. But uh, basically what I've done is I've taken this long cable and I've routed it the way that I wanted it to be routed in through here. And then I have um, cut this, the cable off that comes to the bike. And uh, basically I'm fastening it back down there. But at the end of this, I'm going to waterproof everything. And so I'm putting waterproof sh waterproof shields on these, uh, both individually and for the whole assembly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unsolder these, run these cables in underneath the bike where they need to be, and then when I'm done with this, I'll test to make sure that the um, the cables are on there properly, and that the heated grips are working. And then I will take a heat heat gun, and I will um, make the uh, insulation permanent. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I've got my heating iron charged up. So I want to disconnect, disconnect these two wires. And then what I'm going to do Is this is the cable for the heated grip, the new heated grip. This has got a really nice um, waterproof cable so um, and nice thick wires. This is a really nice wire. So what I learned in the last one is I'm pulling this cable through. This is the cable that goes to the connector on the motorcycle. The connector is all underneath the gas tank, which I don't want to remove. So what I'm doing is I'm basically cutting this cable, uh, whatever cable I don't need, uh, re-splicing these cables, and then so I'm going to solder them into these two cables here. So just remember this is a resistive circuit. The, uh, the grips themselves, they are um, just big resistors, and they are uh, wired in series. So if one goes out, the other one goes out. That was my experience. So I'm just uh, basically I'm just wiring these things in series and the big thing for me is making sure that I can still use the Ducati computer to turn my grips on because I've got this motorcycle is set up for heated grips and I don't want to use a third party heated grip uh, controller when I've already got a controller built into the bike. So um, that's my plan here is making sure that this all works like it's supposed to with the existing computer. So I'm just routing this cable um, around through here. It's a super easy routing job. It just goes around the triple T or the triple tree, whatever you call this thing. It's not a ton of cable. That's what I was saying on the last one um, is, is that I don't have a ton of cable here, which is fine. I'm just trying to get these two things to connect at this point. So I'm just basically routing this with as much cable as I need. And then I'll just cut off what I need off of this one and then wire the two together. So. Mm -hmm. 
Ducati uses these little rubber things. Um, they're like rubber bands, and so I'm just putting them back around the cables the way that they were. So, new cables in there. Wrap all these cables back the way that they were. Get these cables in place. Essentially the way that they were before I started working on this. Normally I just use some uh, low profile cable ties, but they've already provided these and they're pretty good and they're, they don't pull on anything. So I figure they're just as good as any to use. And it's right back to where it was on the existing, you know, cable set. And then they were tied in again right here. So I'm basically just putting it all back together like it was. I'm pretty sure that had the cable tied into that group as well. throttle cable. The newer cable is a little bit bigger. So it takes up just a few millimeters more space. And the rest of the ones, um, there's one that goes like way down here and then there's another one that goes down here but I'm waiting for it till the end to do that. But essentially now you can see this cable comes up through here. And you can also see that I have probably 12 inches too much cable. What I decided to do on the other one was basically loop it around and have enough cable in case I uh, decided I wanted to do something different after that. But I'm essentially cutting a small portion of this cable off. And what I was mentioning, I didn't realize that uh, I wasn't recording, was essentially this cable is just two two wire two simple wires two connect you know common wires. I don't even know why they use different color codes because the other two are red. These are brown and black, and they're in a little sort of empty sheath that's really not waterproof. I mean the heated grips are shit. They're really not that good, and uh, certainly not up for the task of you know heating your hands on this motorcycle. But uh, Anyway, so I'll strip these things back using my stripper again just a couple times around just to nick the nick the sheath pull those wires straight apart and I just noticed that I can't see my stripping tool what can I do with that? Got a tripod, I got a hammer. Don't need those two things. Oh. Stripping tool fell to the ground. And again, you're just taking these. This is a series circuit. This is DC power. The DC power comes into the one grip goes through the resistive circuit uh, for the heated grips and then comes out of the heated grip goes to the next heated grip on the input of that and then the output goes back to the return of the battery and that's how it heats up and my motorcycle has the heated grip connector is right here on this on this grip I push it in I've got high medium and low settings 
already built into the computer. So that's kind of what I want to stick with. Um, these are Oxford grips, really nice grips. Uh, you can't really see them, but these, uh, you can't see them on either side, but this is the grip that I'm putting in. They're Oxfords and they're really nice. Nice. They actually look a lot like the Ducati grips, but the big deal is, is these grips are $19 a piece. The Ducati grips are, uh, 400. $450 for the pair. They want you to take all this assembly off and do all kinds of crazy stuff. Lift the gas tank off, run the wires, plug it into the existing connection. And I'm just buying $20 grips and I'm putting them on a motorcycle, wiring them into the existing connection, soldering them in, and uh, they'll work just fine. I've already tested them to work just fine. I'm just making this permanent, so. using a real solder. This solder is um, lead based solder. This is the good stuff. So I've got the solder on those. I've already got the solder on these. Just put a little bit more solder on these guys. And then what I'm going to do is the heat shrink. What I'm doing is I'm heat shrinking using waterproof heat shrink uh, on each one of these wires individually. And then I put a, I'm going to put another heat shrink on the outer shield of this. So when I'm done this, when I'm done doing the soldering, I'm going to test and make sure that the heated grips work just fine and then I'm going to use my uh, heat gun and I'm going to shrink those things up so that they are waterproof on this motorcycle. So I'll cut the heat shrink down. I'm just using enough heat shrink to go over these cables and don't do like I do which is forget to put the heat shrink on and then you got to undo all this that one's a little bit long and then now that I've got this heat shrink on here I'm going to join these two circuits again these two wires, it doesn't matter, there's no polarity because this is just a DC circuit in series. Um, goes in one side, goes in out, goes out the other, and then goes to the other heated grip and then goes out to the other side. So it's just a big long, big, big long resistor really. So um, let me see if I can figure out a way to keep these things where I can actually do this work. Something to hold. Well, I'm always losing something. Got to put another piece of heat shrink on there. That one's lost to the internal engine. Soldering, you need three hands, and I only have two. So, let's see if I can do this in a way that makes some sense. This works for me. solder on this.
Okay. So I got both of these um, connections done. They look nice and good. Just to clean up some of the solder. So the uh, oh, and I forgot. See, you guys let me forget. I forgot to put the uh, the larger tubing on the outside. So undo what I've done. Side one, side two. Put the tube on. A little bit more solder on this thing. Okay, both of those look pretty good. And again, go back in there and clean these up. Just so the burrs aren't on them. It's really, really hard not to get a, like a really smooth solder on there because I'm in basically it's 40 degrees in here and so it gets really hot but then gets really cold so it's uh, not the prettiest and then what I do is you can probably see at this point that I'm uh, just pulling those insulated wires on top of those cables and then what I'll do is I'll heat shrink that when I test when I test the grips and then I'll pull this sheath over the top of that and it'll waterproof the entire cable assembly and then I'll just make it all look nice. But right now I'm going to turn the motorcycle on. And I don't think that I need to have the engine running to make this work. And turn it on. It always tells me that there's engine errors and that's fine. Maybe I do have to start the motorcycle, so here we go.
and I can tell you that the heated grips are really nice and toasty already. So um, these are ready to be finished up. So I'm going to get my, um, turn off the soldering iron and then get out my heat gun and I'm going to finish these circuits so that they look nice. And so that they are completely waterproof. So it doesn't matter which side. Let's do this side first. So this heating process, when I heat up these um, these tubes, they will they're marine grade, so they um, they have a um, some kind of a substance in them that when you get them hot, it makes them completely waterproof, and that's what I'm after. So those are the small wires first. And I can see the, um, the little oozy stuff coming out of them. So I know that those connections are waterproof. And then I'll do the same thing here. So that way these wires, they won't actually, you know, touch each other on the inside. And then I'm going to take this cover over the top of the two wires. And then I'll shrink wrap that. And that will make the, um, the whole circuit waterproof. So I finished using the air gun. I don't know how much of that you saw, but uh, finished using the air gun. I got these all nice and, and shrink wrapped. Uh, they're waterproof. I tested them to make sure that the, they work on the motorcycle. They get nice and hot. And so instead of using the Ducati um, heated grips, I just got these $19 Oxford grips from the left on the left, left side and the right side. They're $19 a piece from Revzilla. And I did not use the controller because I'm using the built-in controller on my Ducati. I uh, just wired them in. They're in series of circuit, they're resistive sides. And use the existing wires on the Ducati and everything works just fine. So that's how I'm gonna how I fix those guys. So next project is to fix the uh, tank and I'm going to show you in a different video how to fix the cleats in the uh, plastic tank when they when you can't get them out. I've showed how to get them out and I'll show you how to put them back in and then it'll be time to put the motorcycle all back together again but I've got my heated grips back so in the next couple of days if I get this together maybe I can go for another motorcycle ride. It's 40 something degrees in my barn at the moment 
and uh, kind of chilly to do this kind of work, but uh, I wanted to get some of this done before I went to bed. I've got meetings tomorrow morning, so I want to get this done so I don't have to worry about that in the morning. I think that's it for the Ahita grips. Um, again, I'm using the built-in controller for the Ducati. I didn't want to put on a separate controller, and I wanted this to work on my Ducati without having to modify the cockpit or anything like that. So a couple of cheap grips uh, wired into the existing wiring using the existing Ducati controller that's built into my uh, um, handlebar grip over here. So yeah, that's all there is to it. Pretty easy actually. Okay, so I'm about to go on a motorcycle ride I just wanted to let you know that my heated grips that I was telling you about, not only do they look great, but um, they also perform really well. I got the bike all put back together, looking sharp. And it's a March day, into March. It's not terribly cool, but cold enough that I'll use the heated grips on low. This is very classic for me to go out on a motorcycle ride. Um, when it's not warm and it's not too cold but just cold enough to use the grips and I think they turned out great actually I have no problem with the insulation and that they only cost $20 a piece and that you don't have to use the uh, Oxford controller is a big plus and I think um, even for people who know Ducati you would not, you have to do a double take on this bike to see that these are not Ducati grips. So, anyway, it worked out well. This is kind of the closing of this video, and uh, good luck with your conversion. I'm gonna go for a motorcycle ride. It's a sharp looking motorcycle, I enjoy riding it.